And good evening, and welcome to a very special edition of sports. I'm sorry, the way I see it, uh, we're here in Bloomfield. And the reason we're here in Bloomfield tonight is because uh, I had to bring my mom to West Penn Hospital to the ER. And so, therefore, uh, we're here tonight for uh, the way I see it. Uh, earlier, I did the original time at 7 o'clock, but what happened was I ended up finding out I didn't have any volume on the uh, headset. So uh, what I'm going to have to do here tonight is is uh, redo the show. All right. Uh, as usual, we always have our blast segment, and we're going to have our blast segment here tonight. Uh, and I'm blasting the Brighton and the Mount Lebanon nursing homes. Why? Because it's not right. Why would you abuse uh, the money that was given to you by the government, and then you go to your falsified documents, and then you go ahead and you mistreat your your pay of the people who stay there, and then on top of all that, you went ahead and you caused all kinds of problems otherwise as well. Why? What did you do that for? You got the money. You got it from the federal government. It was money that was yours that was given to you to help you, and you go and, and play around with the paperwork. Now the CEO's in trouble, and on top of all that, they're being charged not just with fraud but with many other things. So you know what? Now you're, you're facing jail time. What, you didn't think somebody would catch you? Yeah, you got caught all right. And that's why I'm blasting both Brighton Nursing Home and the Mount Lebanon Nursing Home, who decided that they thought that, that all the, the funds that they had from the federal government, that they were going to steal and falsify paperwork and do all this other stuff. I know you panicked because of COVID. You panicked. You thought you got away with it, and you didn't. Okay? And now you got to pay the price for it, and that's the way I see it tonight. Next, the two people who trespassed at Dormont Pool. Why? Why does this stuff continue? Because what, Everybody's obnoxious because of, the, of the, uh, the inflation problem. Everybody has a problem. Everybody wants to get out, I know. But don't get out by robbing Dormont Pool or trespassing and destroying property. Okay? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know, Dormont Pool struggled over the years. And now it's opened up this year for kids for swimming. Look at Northside. That Murray Pool had to close down twice this year because of criminal activity. Look, we're trying to keep the kids away from you. Why don't you stop stopping it from happening? And, of course, it's the same element that continues in these communities that we're fixing to con that just continue to do the same thing. And here's some more of the element right here at Dormont Pool, and that's the way I see it tonight. Next, the person who stole this guy's Kenny Pickett jersey at the St. Paul's yard sale. On, on Babcock, on Rochester Road. Why? Why would you steal somebody's Kenny Pickett jersey? Oh, I know. It was free. Why not? Why shouldn't I steal it? Because it's not yours. All right? And this is the second time that there's been a stealer theft. Somebody at uh, St. Vincent College stole somebody, some kid's autographed football that had some good autographs on it. Stole it. The kid left it behind. He had to run because it was raining. And then on top of that, someone goes and steals that, makes his day even worse. Wow. We're stealing stealer stuff now all across the board. So now someone had to steal this guy's Kenny Pickett jersey. I'm blasting you tonight because it's not right and it's not fair and it's a disgrace. And that's the way I see it tonight on that. Next, the police department in Ohio who decided they're going to, they are going to find some Eight-year-old girl, okay, listen to this now, for selling lemonade, for having a lemonade stand. Can you believe that? Se having a lemonade stand. That's, that's crazy. That's not only crazy, that's a shame. There's something wrong with somebody when they do something like that. It's terrible, all right? So why would you do it? Why would you even give this, this child, oh, I know. She didn't have a permit to sell. Really? Didn't have a permit to sell, right? Okay, fine. Then then don't have a then that's fine. But but an eight year old girl who's trying to sell lemonade, I could see if she was selling something else. You get my drift? Something else? Yeah. And that tonight is the way I see it. All right, next. Our boneheads. 
the band director from Gateway High School District who decided that he was going to get drunk with an 18-year-old female student. Here we go again, teachers, aides, things like that, causing all kinds of problems, and that's why they're bonehead. And that's why tonight they're my bonehead. Next bonehead, Tennessee, another teacher's aide here who has sexual relations with a student. That's a boneheaded move. One of one of the, the the one and only type boneheaded moves. Okay, and it's really horrible because it's sad that the kid has to go to school and be subjected to that. But of course, the kid could have started it too. You got kids out here now. The uh, you know the latest edition with filthy mouths and things like that have no respect for anything. Okay, probably was a teacher, but it was a boneheaded move, and that tonight. Is the way I see it on a blast in the bonehead moves tonight. All right, next tonight, we're going to talk about some key topics tonight. Some of them we're going to talk about housing, public housing, affordable housing. And we're also going to talk about the uh, lawyers and nursing homes. All right. Now, I want to talk about how affordable housing a little bit here. And I know what you're going to say to me tonight, and your comments are welcome in the comments section. I know what you're going to say to me tonight. You're going to say, Ralph, uh, we, we, we don't have enough affordable housing. No kidding. No joke. We don't have a, enough affordable housing. Why? I'll tell you why. Because these agencies, like the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh, and maybe County Housing, and Action Housing, and whoever housing, doesn't want to, don't want to do anything about problem tenants. They don't want to evict them. All right. I have that problem in my building. And I have the housing authority of the city of Pittsburgh who don't give a care about what goes on in their buildings. They don't want to take responsibility for anything that happens. And they don't care. And this is all across the board here, everybody. It's not just, it's not just here. It's everywhere. All right. You have all these people who are out here running these agencies, and they don't give a crap about anything at all with their buildings. You have elevators that are shut down at, the, at, you know, at a couple buildings. That one I blasted a few weeks back out in Penn Hills still hasn't gotten their, their, uh, their elevator back. The one in Wilkinsburg, their elevator down because the management doesn't care. And this is HUD. HUD needs to step up and start doing something about some of this stuff. HUD needs to change their laws. And you know how you do that, everybody? Instead of being afraid of your politician, why don't you go to your politician and say, I want the HUD laws changed because I'm tired of drug dealing going on in my buildings or in my complex where it's being funded by HUD and you've got all these people selling drugs, causing problems, harassing tenants. You've got people who bring people into the building that are doing that. And guess what? You can't get them on the exclusion list because you have to go through all kinds of hoops. Okay? All right? I could sit here tonight and tell you all night about stuff, but I'm not going to. So what I'm saying to you is this, okay? Why should anyone be put? That's why we have a problem with affordable housing. You have two, 300 people on waiting lists. Okay? Get rid of the, the problem childs, the ones that cause problems in the building. Get them out. Evict them. Oh, we can't do that. They're going to be homeless. Well, that's on them. They should have thought about that before they did what they did in the building. What is this today? Why can't we crack the whip on, the, on some of this stuff? You tie our policemen's hands. You don't let them do their job. Everybody's going around with a little cell phone. Everybody's, you know, doing this. Oh, the cop did that. I don't like the police because of this and that and whatever. Okay. So here we are. We, we have an affordable housing problem. Oh, there's not enough units. No, there's enough units if you get rid of the troublemakers. That would solve half of your problem. Okay. But no, people like the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh don't want to do their job. 
They don't want to take any responsibility for anything that goes on in the building. Now, you tell me this, and maybe you might know somebody that's involved in HUD, or you might know somebody who's a lawyer, or you might know somebody who specializes in federal cases that can tell me if it's under the HUD laws that 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 an agency cannot does not is not supposed to take responsibility for anything that goes on in their building. It's your building. Okay, it's your building. You take responsibility. Get rid of some of these crack junkies. Get rid of some of these people who are causing problems. Get rid of some of these people who are harassing tenants. Yes, harassing tenants, and I can't get them out. Because we are illegal. Or because we, we, uh, we, uh, we don't want to evict people. Oh, it's a problem. Oh. Then quit your job then. Leave. Okay? If you don't want to do your job. The security in, in all these buildings is a joke. Monitor and report. You got somebody out in the front courtyard of the building. Beating up on somebody. Monitor and report. We're not supposed to get out of our chairs. Monitor and report. Really? Then you write people up, and then there's people living in the building that got 200 write-ups. Why? Why? I don't want to hear about laws. I don't want to hear about legal. And I don't want to hear no more crying about there's not enough affordable housing. There would be if some of these agencies and some of these landlords for HUD would get rid of some of these people. Background checks, drug testing every single month. You want to do drugs? You don't go into, you don't deserve to be in a public housing unit. Okay? Illegally intoxicated. Do you want me to go on? That's why we have an affordable housing problem. Because we have 200 names on a waiting list. Okay? And we don't want to get rid of the problem child tenants that are in the building. That will solve half your problems with this issue. Until the new buildings are built. Okay? That is why we have issues with affordable housing because we don't get rid of the, the idiots, the degenerates, and the jerks. Okay? The ones that cause problems for other tenants. No, we write letters. We tell them about programs. We do this, we do that. Out. Gone. Evicted. Oh, well, we don't. We have a homeless problem here. We can't do that. Yeah, yeah, I know we have a homeless problem here. And it's because you have people who deserve an apartment that are homeless because you don't get rid of the ones that cause everybody problems. Put them in jail. Get them out. None of this appeal stuff. Not out. Gone. Guess. You bring a guest in, and immediately, if that guest causes a problem, out. Not, oh, well, you have to go through this, and we have to go through that, and i got to see this person. And the past in the park is getting old. That's leading into my next topic, past the buck. Everywhere you go now, everywhere you see, anybody you talk to, they want to pass the buck. Nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. Nobody wants to do anything. Nothing. Oh, Ralph, we don't have a bad society. There's good people out there. I never said there wasn't. What I said was the majority of our society today stinks. Okay? You can't be nice to people. You can't do anything like that at all. But we're going to pass the buck. Oh, the police don't want to take responsibility, so they pass the buck on to housing. Housing don't want to take responsibility, so they pass it on to the tenant. Then the tenant don't, then the tenant's stuck with it. Okay? It's welfare's responsibility to give you your food stamps. It's the Social Security Administration's responsibility to make sure you get the appropriate amount of money. 
it's IRS's responsibility to make sure they don't give you the wrong the wrong check. But they make you pay for it. They make you go through all the hoops, and they don't want to take responsibility and they pass the buck. Where is our federal government? Let these agencies take their responsibilities. Make them. Because they don't. And this is why we have the problems we have today. That's why the government's hiring 300 and some or whatever it is, or however it is, hundreds of thousands of new IRS agents. Okay? But if the IRS messes up, and I have to pay the price. If somebody gives you money, are you giving it back? Would you give it back? So let's say the IRS gives me a $300,000 check, and I wasn't entitled to it, but they gave it to me. Don't make me pay it back. Why? Why should I give it back? You messed up. You paid for it. No. We're going to pass the buck. No. We're going to make the consume. We're going to make it do it. No. We're going to do this, that, and whatever. You call a supply company to get something, you know, from the supply company. And I said, can you call my doctor's office to make sure that they oh, no. Well, I can't do that. Why? Because it'll affect your lunchtime where you can't eat your donut for breakfast? Oh, I know. You'll miss your coffee break. Ask a buck. That's what it is. And that's what goes on in this country. We passed a buck too much. And that's the way I see it tonight with that as well. Next, nursing homes. Would you put your family or your loved ones in a nursing home? Tell me, would you? Comment section is wide open tonight. I'm broadcasting live here from Bloomfield. I'm in my Jeep. My mom is in, is in uh, West Penn Hospital at the ER. Uh, my wife and I are waiting for uh, her to find out what she's going to do. Are they going to admit her? What's going on? And uh, while I was here, I figured I'd bring my equipment and put a show on for you tonight, even though I'm here. Okay? There's not too many people that do this kind of stuff, but I will. Why? Because I care about my audience, and I care about the people out there. All right? Let's talk about nursing homes, personal care homes. Does your loved one get the appropriate care they're supposed to? And they charge all kinds of money. They take money from your paychecks. They do this. They do that. They, You know what I'm saying? I've, I, I've been responsible for someone, okay, for a mentally challenged person whose family wouldn't take care of her, so I had to take care of her, was my first wife's uh, family. And I had to take care of my mentally challenged sister-in-law, even when my wife passed away. Why? Because her family put her in a personal care home. And not one of them, not one of them took care of that, that woman. Not one of them. Okay? They don't pay well to begin with. And then you got people selling drugs out of these nursing homes, out of these personal care homes and nursing homes. You have people uh, running uh, prostitution, doing all kinds of strange, weird stuff out of these places. And then you have nursing homes. CEOs like the one at Brighton and Mount Lebanon and some of these other places stealing money, taking stuff from the government. What, you didn't get enough to cover your expenses? Brighton was in trouble to begin with. They should have been shut down. But no, Dr. Levine was too busy worrying about shutting the state down and screwing bar and restaurant owners. But nobody said nothing about that. Oh, she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And now she's some kind of a general or an admiral or whatever she is, or lieutenant, with our federal government. She messed the state up, and now she's with the federal government under the same thing. And she's a lieutenant. Dr. Rachel Levine. Did nothing for the nursing homes. Not at all. Should have shut every one of them down, that, 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 like Brighton or whatnot. And I know your loved one suffers, but don't you think your loved one would be better off if you took care of her than what's going on in that home? It was so bad at Brighton that the National Guard had to come in. And, 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 the, and, the, and our dictating governor, Wolf, should have left the, uh, the National Guard there. 
because they weren't taking care of everything. But now, their CEO is going to jail. He's, he's charged with fraud and several other charges. Do falsifying documents. Mount Lebanon Home N Nursing Home Care on Gilkerson Road. Are you kidding me? Another one who did the same thing. Terrible. It really is. It's a bad situation. Would you put your loved one in a nursing home? That's why hospice care is up sky high. You know why? Because we're too busy worrying about playing Xbox and on our cell phones. And we don't look at the reality of things. We don't look at a, why affordable housing is struggling. Okay? You know why? Because you're the, you're the problem child. If you're watching my show tonight and you're a problem child in a housing place and nothing's done, shame on you. Okay? And shame on management for not doing their job, which, of course, no one, no one does. Who does their job these days? Who? Nobody. That tonight's the way I see it about nursing homes. Let's talk about, I got, I got something for you here that, that I forgot. I had to redo the show here, everybody, because the first one, uh, my headset, I didn't realize my headset didn't have volume. and I don't understand what happened to it. It's not working, so I probably have to get rid of it. Okay, so I had to switch to another headset. I'm on the road here, mobile. I'm in my Jeep. I'm doing my uh, the way I see it show tonight from Bloomfield here by West Penn Hospital because my mom had to go to the ER for something wrong, and we're waiting to find out what's going on. And while I'm here, I said I'll bring my mobile equipment and we'll do the way I see it here tonight because I felt bad and I don't want you guys not to have it tonight, and I didn't want to have to reschedule it for another night. Okay. Someone said to me, and I saw this on Facebook, and it's one from one of my friends, went to Cedar Point, got a season pass, paid what, less money, the season pass, park your car, and everything else at Cedar Point, and it was cheaper than Kennywood. Cheaper than Kennywood. And Cedar Point has a lot to offer. Okay, Cedar Point has way more a lot to offer than Kennywood. And you know what? They treat handicapped people good there, too. So does Waldemere. I've been blasting Kennywood for a while. And maybe what I've been saying here on my show has caused Kennywood to go into panic mode. They're offering discounts on, on tickets now on, on the Internet. Okay. Where's my general admission at Kennywood for disabled people and people that are handicapped? I'm not talking about just senior citizens. I'm talking about disabled people. Okay. You notice they don't have Irish Day there no more. They don't have Italian Day there no more. I refuse to go back till they get general admission. Okay. I'm not going to pay $40. Or whatever it is, 50 bucks to get in. I'm not going to get a season pass because I only go there to play games. I can't ride the rides because I'm handicapped. It's difficult for me to get on and off some of the rides. It's also uh, bad for my body as far as that goes. Okay? So uh, why should I spend what I'm going to spend money on games and all that stuff at Kennywood when I go to Waldemir, pay 20 bucks? All right. The only difference is then I still have to pay 20 or 40 bucks. I don't even know what it is now for a, a power scooter there. Okay. All right. But I wanted to bring that to your attention tonight. All right. And that's the way I see it. Next, the duck is back. Remember the duck? And I'm not talking about duck hodges. I'm not talking about the ducks over there in North Side or wherever they are. I'm talking about the duck. The one that was in the river some years ago, and everybody took their kid and played hooky with their kid and took off work to take their kid downtown to go see that duck. There were a half a million people running around town to go see that duck. Well, you can go again. The duck is back. It's in Erie now. It's at the uh, Bayfront in Erie. So go ahead. Go see the duck. I don't know the dates, but go see the duck. 
enjoy it, have fun, you know, whatever. All right, have a have a blast, have a good time. I don't care what you do with it. All right, but to come on TV and say I took my kid out of school and I called off work to go see a doc. What 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 is so enticed about some duck in the river? Huh? What? Oh, it was in London. Oh, so since it was in London and it's here in Pittsburgh, I'll go see this duck. That's the way I see it tonight. Next. We're gonna talk about lawyers. All right. You know, here's what I don't like, and I'm not saying all lawyers are bad lawyers. I'm not saying that at all. So please do not take this out of context. Do not take this the wrong way. And I'm not saying it tonight because I'm angry. I am angry. I'm angry about the fact that, okay, that lawyers who are supposed to help you don't. Lawyers who are supposed to help you will not. You know, lawyers now, they're sort of picking and choosing what they want to do. But then you've got some lawyers who used to be, who are really good defense lawyers and now advertising about injuries. Okay. Lawyers now are not starting to specialize anymore. They're starting to branch out a little bit. Well, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. But what I have a problem with is when you tell me you can't help me. Okay. When I call one of these injury lawyers, when I get into an auto accident, they tell me the case isn't big enough. A lawyer is, takes an oath to help someone when they need help, just like a doctor. Okay. But now you have a lot of these attorneys. Now, they won't even take lawsuits. No, they won't even touch lawsuits. Okay. What, what is going on with, the, with this today? That lawyers. Doctors, bankers, everybody. And again, it comes back to passing the buck. It comes back to laziness. And it's a big ripple effect that I knew was going to happen sooner or later. And it's happening now. And it's worse now than it's ever been. And that is the fact that we have issues with this. Passing the buck. Laziness. Nobody wants to do anything. All right. I'm not a law professor. I don't know about law. I know some laws. I know a few things. But what I don't like is when I call a lawyer. Like, for instance, here we go. Have you ever called an IRS lawyer or Optima Tax Relief or one of them places or one of them deals? Consumer Credit Counseling Services. They don't help you. You have to pay. I want somebody that can get me out of that jam, not keep me in the jam, and then I still have to pay. Okay? That's what I want a lawyer for. I called a prominent lawyer in town here who's, the ta who's supposed to be the best tax lawyer in the world and can't get my mother out of this jam with the IRS. Keeps telling me there's nothing he can do about it. This is the best he can do. And my mother still has to pay. 77 years old. It's terrible. Okay. And again, I'm not saying all lawyers are bad. I know some good lawyers. But there's a, a bunch of them out there that claim, we got your back, not your wallet. And then I call your firm, and you transfer me to some, some other guy in the building who don't return my phone calls. If you can't take the case, then don't. Lawyers, are they good or are they bad? They say you should always have a lawyer. Well, I have a lawyer from a firm that does nothing for me. Can't stop the, the wheel of the housing authority. Can't stop the wheel of this. Can't stop the wheel of that. Okay. I've had my bad experiences with lawyers for every type of thing. I had a bankruptcy lawyer who got this part. I had an injury lawyer back in the 90s that got this part. Okay. What's the problem here with some of you lawyers? You're supposed to help people. Not screw people around. And that tonight is the way I see it. With all that tonight.
And tonight I'm broadcasting live in Bluefield here by West Penn Hospital. I'm waiting for my mom. She's in the uh, ER getting examined. Uh, she had a little bit of a problem. And I brought my equipment with me tonight and broadcasting live here on the way I see it. We're live here on YouTube and Facebook. We're here every Monday night at 7 p.m. The reason why I'm still here is because I had to do a redo of this show tonight because the first show, my headset broke, and I didn't realize that I didn't have volume. Well, guess what? Here we are. I had to do the redo right here. Comment section is wide open tonight as well. A couple more topics to talk about tonight. All right. The uh, the state has announced that they are taking over the Sony um, facility in Newstand. Now, what the state is doing is they're using this for uh, training. There are staff training, and they're also using it for uh, EMS training. Okay, so uh, it'll be at this new Sony facility out in New Stanton is where this is going to be at. And the state has, I guess, bought the property or they're renting it or whatever it is they're doing. And uh, they're supposed to have all the first responders, I guess, fire department. I don't know if it's across the state or if it's just the state employees themselves. They will all be trained there to plow drivers, anything connected with the state. You will be trained there. All right, and that's the way I see it tonight. All right, the next one. This lady from Nevada, she went out and she purchased a home, okay? Her home was $100,000 when she purchased a home in Nevada. Uh, somewhere outside of Reno, okay? Now, the paperwork got messed up, I guess, in the county or the township or the district area whoever does the paperwork for the house. Somebody messed it up, the real estate agent. I don't know who it is. They didn't say. All they said was this woman that I heard that this woman did this. Well, it turns out the paperwork got messed up, and she ended up buying 12 houses, which is all 12 houses in the plan, including hers. So now she owns all these houses and didn't have to pay for them because somebody screwed it up on a thing. Now, do you see what I'm talking to you about? Somebody messed it up, so let them eat it. Okay. she. I don't think she has to give those houses back. Why? You screwed up the paperwork. That's on you. You you clean it up. This past the buck stuff in this country anymore is getting old, too. All right? That's the way I see it tonight. All right, next, American Airlines. American Airlines is decided they're going to cut flights this fall out of Pittsburgh International Airport. You know, it's bad enough people waiting six hours for flights. They don't have enough help. They don't have enough pilots. Now they want to cut flights out of Pittsburgh International. You know, just when Pittsburgh International is starting to get their, their themselves together after useless air screwed them over and everybody else, okay, they are now starting to get their act together a little bit here. They're, they're going to downsize the airport and make it brand new. And uh, fix it up to where you don't have to take that stupid train over there. It takes five hours just to get over there. And then by the time you get over there, you're so tired, you want to go to sleep, you miss your flight because you're tired from going through TSA, going through that, that train. And now all you'll have to do is go through TSA, go immediately, go to ticketing or wherever, go to TSA, and then you're on your way. You don't have to take the train no more after they're done with this new terminal. Okay, and then now American Airlines announces they want to cut flights out of Pittsburgh International to new, key cities, New York, Chicago, places like that. Are you joking? The airlines made, you, you guys have made money. What are you cutting flights for? Why? Because nobody's flying them? No, everybody went to the Bahamas this year. Everybody went to Florida this year. Everybody got on me for bringing up trip ideas. Okay, I try to help you with trip ideas, and all I get is a bunch of sass or a bunch of uh, what do you get that for? I'm not going to go to Canton, Ohio and watch the uh, watch the USFL championship game. It's a trip idea. You're complaining you got to pay for gas. You're complaining airline tickets are too high. Go to the championship game at Canton. See the Hall of Fame. Go to Cedar Point. Go to uh, Hershey. Go to places like that that are nearby. I didn't go nowhere on an airplane this year. I wasn't putting up with that. All right? You know, everybody that has these heartaches, they do it to themselves. They have to. You know, 
And that's because people don't keep themselves informed. They don't watch the news. They don't watch listen to the radio. They're too busy playing around on TikTok. They're too busy worrying about social media. They're too busy doing this and too busy doing that. But they're not. They don't have time to watch the news. They don't even have time to return your phone call or your email. Okay? That is the way I see it tonight. Just a few announcements tomorrow night. 8 p.m. Uh, right here live on YouTube and Facebook is the, the uh, Sports Corner uh, broadcast. Uh, my guest will be Clayton Schroeder. He is a author of a book on Atlanta GA Sports, Atlanta Georgia Sports. And we're going to talk a little bit about what the Falcons are up to this year as well. Talk about the Steeler preseason game. Everybody thinks it's a Super Bowl, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. The fall of the Pirates. All right. And some other sporting uh, news as well tomorrow at 8 p.m. All right. Wednesday night, 10, 10.30 on the sports web on YouTube, 10.30 p.m. start time. Now, the sports web starts at 9 o'clock. It's with Peter Blake down in Tampa. And he does this show for, um, for two hours. But from 10.30 to 11, there's a half-hour segment where Mark Mancini, my producer, and I from uh, Log Talk Radio are on with Peter Blake, and we talk about wrestling. It's called Turnbuck. We'll talk to Colin as well. All right? Check out one of Peter's uh, sports web shows on YouTube. Go on his page. Go on, uh, you know, uh, on YouTube and check it out. Also, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and like me on Facebook as well. All right? Where you can watch the archive versions of these shows. All right? So, and also on Thursday, 6 p.m. this coming Thursday, I will be on WDBD Radio, 860 AM in Philadelphia, on their Facebook page. I will be on a show at 6 p.m. called Liberty Bell Smack with uh, Marianne Costello, Sal Tatario, Mark Mancini, and I will be a guest on the show talking for one hour. That is uh, Thursday from 6 to 7. Then at 8 o'clock, I will be on. I have my wrestling show on Blog Talk Radio, Wrestle Talk with myself. Smoking Jim Frazier, Clayton Truder, and Mark Mancini this coming Thursday. Great wrestling talk. I urge you to participate. 347 205 9631. And then also on Saturday, 5 p.m., Sports Corner with me, the TV show version, and Smoking Jim Frazier. And our, uh, the, the uh, uh, Channel 21, Comcast 47, Verizon, PC TV, and also on PC TV's Facebook page. Everybody have a good night. Thank you for watching, and uh, be safe.